Hey there nation, welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with episode number 41 of our Cheap Shot series. And on this video, we're going to show you how to quickly as well as cheaply paint up some Bretonian Knights. Now the skills and techniques and the tips I'm going to share with you in this video could be used for basically any kind of knight that the Bretonian Army has. Uh, you're going to save you guys a lot of money at the same time. Total investment to create this entire unit as you're seeing it right now for the Cheapskate method is $29.42. And that's assuming, of course, that you have to buy everything on this list for the very first time, as opposed to the Citadel and Army Painter method, which will save you $191.28 by doing it our way. So you can see here we have a really bright, bold, colorful unit of Bretonian Knights, and that is the perfect way they should look because uh, Bretonian Knights are nice and colorful. So with that being said, we're going to show you guys how to save over $191 in this, uh, in this technique. So let's get this video on a roll. All right, so the very first thing you, of course, need to do is to prime your miniatures. You'll need to prime both the horses as well as the riders. And as you can see in this video, I've also kind of done a little bit of a sub-assembly. I uh, separated the riders from their mounts, and that way they can keep them separate. I like to paint the riders as well as the mounts separately and then glue them together all at once at the end. That way you can get all the nooks and crannies. Don't have to worry about, you know, messing up your paint jobs between the riders and the mounts as well. It just makes things a lot easier. So what I like to use is Rust-Oleum uh, Flat White Primer. So the cheapest primer I can find at Walmart runs you about $3.99 and just do it once over real quick. Primer support because it does two things. One, it gives a good solid undercoat for your uh, colors to stick to, so white will make your colors very, very bright. And secondly, it gives it a textured surface for your paints to stick to because if you're just to paint these up in bare plastic, what end up happening is that your cloaks will just slide right off the, the miniature and ruin your finish as well. So uh, that's what I recommend you use, some flat white primer. Just do it once over real quick. So the next step is to work on the horses. So we'll be working on the horses first. And the first thing we need to do, of course, is to base coat all of the fur. In this case, I like using Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel Paints. You can get this at your local Walmart. It runs you about 50 cents. Uh, just do two thin coats of this stuff. All of the parts of the horses are showing. So around the eyes, the ears, as well as the legs. Now the last part about this is that not much of the flesh of these horses is actually showing. And the reason why is because they have these uh, wonderful tabards that are covering their entire bodies. And so that's what we're using to cover up their barding on that. So, you know, wherever parts that you can see, just take out two things coats of burnt umber it's a nice dark rich brown color and then move on to our dry brush all right, so the next color we use is Territorial Beige by Apple Barrel Paint. It's a nice, cheap 50 cent tube of paint you can get it at your local Walmart. And all you're gonna do is just a quick dry brush all over the parts that are exposed in the flesh on the horses. So things like the legs, the mouths, the eyes, the ears, and around the flanks of the bodies where the saddles are located at. Just do a real quick, simple dry brushing with your Territorial Beige and you're ready to move on. And remember, when it comes to dry brushing, it's always a good idea to start working in layers. Always start with a light shade of uh, dry brushing. And you can always add more layers to, to, to make the brightness greater. Um, um, by doing this, you basically create some three-dimensionality in your miniature. You leave the darker color in the recesses while leaving the lighter color that you dry brushed on onto the raised surfaces. Because it's always easy to add more dry brushing, but it's really difficult to take it off once it's on. So always work in layers and go from light and uh, make your uh, dry brushes darker as you need to. So with that step away, the next thing we need to do, of course, is to start working on the tabards on our horses in this case. Now, if you notice, the painting surface that I'm painting at is actually a little bit different. The reason why is because when I actually made this video, was taking this photo when I was painting, I actually hung up a little bit with Iron Major and we were painting our miniatures together. So if you're wondering what the situation is going on with that, that's why that gray tap there is, is a little bit different. I'm at uh, Iron Major's place. We're painting these up together. But anyways, continuing on. So with our Bretonian horses, Bretonian miniatures are extremely colorful. Their knights are gorgeously colored and they actually have all the these different multiple colors per individual miniature and the reason why that is the case is because they're modeled off of medieval knights from uh, the middle ages in europe and a common feature that a lot of these cloth tabards on horses had was this quadratic kind of look going on with their uh quartering of the horses so what they would do is they would actually paint like uh you know one half of the horse in one color and then the other half of the horse in another color with their tabards to represent the different houses and the nobles that were fighting for the uh, kings and nobles of that time period so because i did exactly the same kind of technique here so you can see i basically started with a couple layers uh first of all i used uh king's yellow king's gold by apple barrel paint for all the parts that are done in yellow for all the parts that are done in red i used true red by Adidas acrylic paint runs at 65 cents while as the apple barrel went to 50 uh then you use black just by apple barrel paint runs at 50 cents for two with that and antique white uh by apple barrel paint runs at 50 cents as well and i just kind of just did the first half of it and what you want to do is alternate the color so for example if you're doing the head and the front left or front right arm do that in one color and then leave the other front leg what a bear so you can do a different color there and then whatever you do for the rear leg or right leg or whatever one you want to do do that in one color and then alternate with the other colors so you can see your half of the horse's tabards are colored right now and their primary colors 
And the next step is another base coast. This time we're using another accent color to uh, pick them out real quick. So you can see here, so for some of the miniatures, I used red by Anita's Acrylic. I used uh, King's Gold by Apple Barrel Paint for my yellows. I used Holly Branch Green for the green portions. Uh, also made by Apple Barrel Paint, runs at 50 cents for that. I also used Light Blue for some of the other ones as well. And uh, that runs at 50 cents at your local Walmart as well. Also made by, uh, uh, also made by Apple Barrel. So you can see here, this is what the end result kind of looks like as well. Now if you notice, two of my horses there in the top left, uh, the, there's one that's all done in red and all done in yellow. Now if you want to, you can of course make solid color uh, knights if you want to as well. I mean, it's your choice, it's your uh, choice of miniatures. Uh, I originally did this to do that because I thought it'd be kind of easier because after I was doing this quartering process, I realized that ah, maybe it might be faster if I just do solid colors. And while it is faster, it's not as interesting. I noticed that they kind of just did not look as cool as the ones that I'd done the quartering with on the on the different colors. So because of that, in the next slide, you'll see that I actually changed up with those uh, with those two horses, actually changed up their uh, color scheme a little bit. And like I said, whenever you're painting miniatures, uh, you have this thing in your mind's eye what you imagine was going to happen, but you really don't know what it's going to look like until you actually paint it. And if you want to make adjustments, you can always do so. Because as the wise painter Bob Ross once said, we don't make mistakes, we only make happy accidents, and you can always fix it. It's a very forgiving art form, uh, acrylic painting on miniatures, especially when you're doing it on something as large as a horse. So now that we're done with that, next thing you need to do, of course, is a dry brush. You'll need to find the pastel version of whatever base color that you could use to dry brush it with. So that way you create some uh, differences and some contrasting. The pastel chalky colors that you're using to dry brush your miniature with will uh, catch on the highlighted surface while the lighter darker goes into the recesses and that's the reason why you want to do it that way. So for example, everything that I have done in yellow, I dry brushed in sunny day. Everything I've done in blue, I've dry brushed in um, sky blue. All the parts that I did in black, I dry brushed that with Anita's acrylic gray for all the parts that are in red i did flag red by apple barrel paint and for all the parts i did in green were in lime sherbet and all those paints were only 50 cents of tube so all you need to do is of course do a quick dry brushing as you can see it catches the fold of the fabric while leaving that darker color in the recesses and it looks absolutely fantastic as well so once you get done dry brushing miniature you're pretty much done with the uh, tabards now it's time to work on the saddles all right, so for this one, you're going to need to do base coat, and you're going to need two different colors to do the saddles. You're going to need black as well as white. First of all, you're going to use the black paint in order to do the actual saddle where the knight actually sits on. And so because I just picked out black because it's a nice, simple color, and then what I decided to do is do a lot of accent work with white. So if you notice around the around the uh, perimeters of each of the saddles, I've added like this one thin strip of white around it to kind of accent the saddles. I also did exactly the same thing with the belting that goes across the midsection of the horse that keeps the saddle on as well. I also picked out the reins of the horses out and white as well and then some of these miniatures actually have like a little bit of white uh, bordering between the different colors on the uh, the rear half of the horse, so I picked those out in white as well. And then lastly, just to mark these guys out a little bit different to make them look different from uh, Imperial horses as well, what I decided to do is add a small color of white around the eyes of the horses. So the eye holes that they have on their tabards that cover their faces, I just rimmed the perimeter of that in white to give some more accent pieces so that way you can see their eyes better. And then of course I did the same thing around the part where their snout or their, their mouths come through on their uh, tabards as well, just to add a little bit more detail. Now obviously I didn't do that white detailing for the antique white horses, but for everything else though I did exactly that. And the last thing I did of course is I decided to pick out socks on the horses as well. If you notice on their legs between their wrist joints or where their hooves are, I decided to paint those up in white just to make them look different from imperial horses i didn't do that stock look effect on my horses for my empire army so this way adds just another level of difference uh between the empire as well as the bretonians so that way they're two very distinctive looking units and then that's what it should look like when you get done with the uh white as well as the saddles and the last detail you work on for these horses are all the bridles around their mouths. Uh, as you can see, they've got a little bit of a chain there that's hooking it between their bridles and their mouths as well as the uh, reins of their horses. So I just picked those details out in Anniversary Silver by Folk Art. It's a nice, bright, brilliant silver color, and it contrasts nicely with all the primary colors that we worked with. And uh, once you're done with that, the mounts are all finished. The next thing you need to do now is work on the riders. So the riders. Uh, first thing you do, of course, is pick out any flesh tones. Luckily for most Bretonian miniatures, a lot of flesh is not showing on the miniatures. They're primarily encapsulated in armor. So because of that, there's not much flesh on this one. Exactly in this one, there's only one guy who's had any flesh showing, and that's the standard bear. He's got his arm raised up so you can see his wrist as well as his face. So I just picked that out in flesh by Apple Barrel Paint. Runs 50 cents to your local Walmart. Uh, I decided not to do any dry brushing on the flesh part. I just felt lazy, so I didn't feel like doing it, so I skipped it. 
So the next clone you work on now is on the armor, and like I said before, luckily all these Bretonians are usually covered head to toe in armor. So because of that, uh, we use two different colors. I use Gunmetal Gray by Folk Arts, a nice dark gray metal, metallic color, and I also use Anniversary Silver by Folk Arts, which is a nice bright silver color. And as you can see in this photo, I've painted four of them in dark gray, as well as four of them in light, uh, sorry, four of them in dark metal, and then four of them in light metal, and there, uh, five of them in light metal. And the reason why I've done that is because I want to create some contrasting between the different riders, so that way, you know, they all, they all, they all look the same some have like darker armor some are bright armor and then of course when you add the colors to them as well for their house colors that's really going to do a nice job picking out the details between them as well once that's over with, we now do pick up the rest of the details in a base coat with some additional metallic colors. So first of all, things like the tips of their lances as well as the butt cap on their lances, I picked that out in uh, pure gold by Folk Art. Same thing with some of the chainmail that was showing for some of these miniatures, just to add a little bit of variety to the miniature as well. Same thing with their uh, their uh, knee and elbow joints on their armor as well. I picked out those in uh, Anita's metallic paints. I used antique copper to do that, so that way it adds some color variation to the armor. So that way it's not just completely silver. It's it looks kind of boring when it's all just silver by itself, but adding these accent pieces, it makes it look really cool as well. And then of course I used um, Folk Art's copper color for the uh, the stirrups that their feet are resting in as well. Just add a little bit of detail. So you can see there, even though they're all metallics, there's some variety of metallic colors in the miniature. Makes the knights look much more interesting. All right, for this step, we're going to pick out the details on the sheaths of these characters. So a lot of Bretonian knights usually have swords as well as daggers hemming from their hips on their miniatures. So because of that, to pick out those leather goods, I just put two thin layers of Territorial Beige by Apple Barrel Paint. It's a nice pale brown color. makes little, does a really good job with leather goods. Just put two thin layers on those sheaths as well as leather strips, so that way it helps kind of pick those out as well. And for the last bit of detail, the last thing we work on, of course, is the saddle as well as the stirrups uh, for these guys. You pick those out in Pavement by Apple Barrel Paint. It runs you about 50 cents at your local uh, Walmart. Um, all we did, of course, was just pick out the parts of the saddle that are showing on the miniatures. We painted those in two thin layers of pavement. And same thing with the thin strip of leather that goes from their stirrups to the to the uh, saddle itself. We just picked out those thin leather uh, those thin leather strips in black in this uh, pavement color. And the reason why we've done that is because we've already put the uh, dark color on the uh, saddles of the horses. It just kind of helps blend in and make it look seamlessly as Miniature. And so once we're done with all the metallics as well as the details, the next thing we need to work on now are the colors of the tabards of the knights as well as their shields as well as lances. So as you can see here, it's just another series of base coats, just two thin coats of whatever colors that you want. So as you can see here from my picture here, I decided to match up the color schemes on the knight's shields as well as their tabards and whatever fabric they have to whatever color the horses have as well. So for example, if you look on the knight on the left-hand side, his horse is red and yellow, so because that used red and yellow for his, for his character. I used a yellow for his tabard, I put red along the cloth of his helmet as well as a red color for his lance to act as a uh, to act as a little bit of a, of a contrasting color. Same thing with the rider on the far right hand side. Uh, his horse is green and red, so I used exactly the same colors on him, and I picked out his lance in green as well. Now for the knight in the middle, of course, is black and green, so I used black for his lance, and I used a checkered pattern, as you can see there on a shield. I alternated between green and black as well. As you can see, I also have the same kind of similar design going on for other knights. Some knights' shields are cut in half between two different colors. Some have stripes, some have vertical lines, some have vertical, uh, horizontal lines. It just depends on how you want to do it. Whatever variety you want to uh, use on these, um, just go at it. Now, I'm not really good at freehand painting, so I didn't paint any uh, symbols or coat of arms on the uh, shield just because I'm not really good at freehanding, so I wasn't really going to sweat it. And plus, they really don't make transfers anymore for Bretonian Knights, so because of that, I just kind of just did that little line pattern just to make it look interesting, just to make it look more uh, diverse on the miniatures as well. And so that's what I did. I just used the same colors I used for the horses, I used for the riders just to make sure that they match, to make it look like the horse as well as the rider are from different... Uh, from the same house. Now, if you want to alter the color between them or whatever the case may be, you know, more power to you. It's your choice. So once we're done with that, we do an oil wash. And like always, we use Midwax Poly Shade Mission Oak. Uh, we use that substance instead of Army Painter. Army Painter would recommend using Strong Tone or Soft Tone, but the only problem with those, those cans cost you $32, while a can of Midwax Poly Shades only runs you about $6.99. Now, when I do the oil wash on this one, if you notice, the miniatures are not as dark as they usually are. And the reason why that is the case is because I decided to cut the darkness of my Poly Shade uh, by quite a bit. Um, I've been 
some of my miniatures have been getting kind of like oil wash heavy with. I've been playing a little too much, a little too dark, so it's making the miniatures really, really dark. I wanted to keep the bright vibrancy of these miniatures, so what I decided to do was to back off a little bit on the darkness of the miniatures. So what I decided to use is Mission Oak, so I just get kind of, kind of like a uh, three to one mixture this time around. So I put three, uh, one part poly shades in Mission Oak, and then I cut it with three parts paint thinner is what I decided to do. I mixed the two of them together just to make sure that the, uh, the opacity of the wash was much lighter. So instead of being a really dark brown and it being a kind of like a very clear kind of like maple syrup brown color. And so as you can see there, when I put it onto the uh, miniature, the darker color still of course goes into the recess of the miniature as well, brings out a lot of the details, also blends out a lot of the colors. It also kind of flattens the, uh, the dry brushing look that we've done on the miniature as well and blend those colors together. But at the same time, you notice it did not make these miniatures quite as dark as it usually does because I cut it with quite a bit of uh, paint thinner so that way it just kind of just flows a lot easier as well. As a side effect to it too, the poly shades also made this, uh, by doing that, these miniatures dried much faster than they usually did. Uh, they usually actually took about a handful of hours, I think when I went to go check up on them as well. Irregardless though, I still recommend you wait 24 hours just to be on the safe side. And then I did exactly the same thing. I was like, wow, these are dry already. I'm gonna wait till the next day just because I wanna jinx myself. And that's exactly what I did is too. So once you do your little oil wash over your miniature, next thing you do of course is a varnish. All right, so after 24 hours later, I decided to use a matte varnish. And this step, of course, is optional. The poly shades will give your miniatures a high gloss sheen when it gets done drying because there is polyurethane uh, inside of the uh, oil, inside of the uh, poly acrylic. Um, I don't like that shininess, so I matted it down with some matte varnish, as you can see here, and it muted those colors really down. Brought down that sheen. As you can see, you'll see all the beautiful details that that wash is brought out. And at the same time, still maintain the very bright vibrancy of the colors that we use as well. So yes, they are a tad darker than they were before we did the oil wash but just just a smidge uh still pretty vibrant all things considered so i was really really happy with that step now of course if you do not like the matte finish you could of course leave the high gloss uh, finish if you want to perfectly your choice so now that we're done with the miniatures, with the painting, now what we need to do is work on the bases. And as always, of course, I use my same wood glue, sand, water mixture I use for all my bases and my miniatures. And so once the texturing was dry, all I did is, of course, is put two thin coats of English Ivy Green by Apple Barrel Paints. Runs you 50 cents at your local uh, Walmart. It's a nice Ivy Green color. Just did two thin coats over the entire surface of the, of the uh, texture. So that way it looks like these guys are running across a grassy field. So the next step afterwards, of course, is a dry brush. In this case, I use Lime Sherbet by Apple Barrel Paints. I just did a quick dry brush real fast over the uh, dark green texture they had to create some highlights in the miniatures. So it makes it look like they're really running across a field of grass uh, somewhere on the miniatures. This is kind of like the old school uh, classic Warhammer look for basing. All miniatures back in the 1990s of Warhammer uh, Fantasy Battle anyways, used to have like this bright green grassy look on the bases and I really thought it looked really cool. And uh, I decided to carry on this tradition with the, my human army for the uh, Bretonians. I decided to go with that look as well. And the very last step, of course, is to rim the bases. In this case, I used two thin coats of palm leaf by Apple Barrel Paint. And as you can see there, it does a really nice job of bringing it all together. Uh, it brings in all those beautiful greens at the same time it's a nice neutral color where you can still see a lot of the bright, vibrant colors here in the miniatures as well. Now, if you notice, I've also added some more character miniatures in here as well that wasn't before. I added three different character unit miniatures. And that's because those three characters I was using to paint uh, on a different side project for a different unit. But I thought it looked cool, really cool to add it to here to make it look like, you know, how, what kind of effect it you can get for your miniatures as well. And once again, here is the end result of what your miniatures will look like using these really money-saving, cost-saving tips. As you can see, the entire uh, cost it took us to pay out these miniatures was $29.42, assuming you're buying everything on our shopping list for the very first time to paint with a cheapskate method. So now that we're done talking about how to save you guys some money on this, how we did it with a really cheap method and quickly to paint up these Bretonian Knights, the next thing we're going to do is talk about the shopping list that you need to buy from Citadel and Army Painter if you use their products to paint up these miniatures in exactly the same way that I did. So that being said, let's get that portion on a roll. All right, so this is what Citadel and Army Painter would sell you for you to paint up your miniatures of these Bretonian Knights using the exact same methods that we did. First of all, you need to buy a can of Corax White Spray for a primer by Gang's Workshop that runs you $17. Then you'll then need to paint the fur of all the horses in Wildwood by Apple uh, by uh, Citadel, runs you $7.80 for that. And then dry brush it with Baylor Brown, which runs you $4.55. Now for the base coating for all the uh, colors for the tabards of the horses, you'll need Mephiston Red, Everland Sunset, Wraithbone, Teclas Blue, as well as Caliban Green. 
screen. And all those, of course, run you $4.55 for that. Now, to do the uh, saddles of the horses, you'll need to buy a bad and black, which will be $4.55 for that. And lastly, of course, you need to dry brush all the colors that you did for the base coating for both the horses as well as the riders. You'll need to use Blue Horror for the blue, Wild Rider Red for the red, Slanesh Gray for the black, Hellion Green for the uh, green portions, and Hexos Pale Sun for all the parts that you did in yellow. And those will all run you guys $4.55 for that as well. And then for the uh, detail that you did around the rims of the horses, of the saddles, as well as the snouts around the eye sockets, as well as their reins, uh, you're going to use White Scar runs you $4.55 by Apple, uh, by uh, Citadel Paint for that as well. Now moving on to the metallic colors, you will need to buy uh, Iron Breaker for all the bright silver. That runs you $7.80 for the detailing on the bridles. For the flesh of the knight, you'll need to buy Cadian Flesh Tone, which runs you $4.55 for that. And for the knight's armor, you'll need to use Lead Belcher, which runs you $7.80 for that, and pick out the details and retribute armor for the gold portions, runs you $7.80 for that. You'll need to buy a Screaming Bell for the stirrups, runs you $7.80 for that. And then of course for the, all the brass and uh, copper color accent pieces we did in the armor, you'll need to buy a tub of Brass Scorpion, which runs you $7.80 for that as well. Now, if you wanted to do the quick paint method, we're using an oil wash, you'll need to buy Army Painter Strong Tone, which runs you $32 for a can of that. And if you decide to do a matte finish on your miniatures, you'll need to buy a can of Munitorium Varnish, which runs you $19.50. Now, for the base works, you'll need to paint the texture of the bases, Vulcan Green, which runs you $4.55. You'll need to, of course, dry brush that in uh, the color uh, Hellion Green that we use for the dry brushing for that. And then lastly, of course, you need to rim the bases and military and green which will be $4.55 for that product. Now assuming that you bought everything on this list from Citadel as well as Army Painter, we're talking about a grand total investment of $220.70 for you to paint your miniatures this way. Now you take that $220.70 that they would charge you and you subtract the $29.42 that we would consider to be used for our cheapskate method and you're talking about a grand total savings of $191.28 which you in this case you could use the buy, to buy the brand new box set of Warhammer 40k that's now hitting shelves. So <laughs> you can use the money in order to do that. So there you go, you guys. This is how you guys quickly, as well as cheaply, paint up some Bretonian knights. You can use this for any style of knight that they have in their army list. It's a very cost-effective and quick way to paint them up. As always, you guys, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. You guys' input is invaluable to us, as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good to do for this one, you guys. We'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.